Well, a very good evening to you. Uh, this is the Daily Dose of Hope. We want to thank all of you for being here, and you may be asking yourself the question, what is the Daily Dose of Hope? The Daily Dose of Hope is a place that you can come to on a daily basis to get to know God. And um, we have a couple of uh, things that we want to mention to you before we get into what we're going to do tonight. Down below me here, you can see just below me, there's a description box down here. If you go down here, you'll find our YouTube channel, our Rumble channel, and our Facebook page for the Daily Dose of Hope. We would appreciate if you would go to Rumble and YouTube channels and subscribe. And then go to our Daily Dose of Hope YouTube, or excuse me, Facebook page, and like it and follow us on Facebook. In addition to that, you can also go to our Facebook group. We have a Facebook group called The Daily Dose of Hope. And you can go there and you can leave prayer requests. You can post prayer requests. You can ask people if they want prayer. And uh, all kinds of good things will happen. Now, today we are on part two or day two of prayers for Ukraine. And uh, yesterday, it wasn't on the screen next to me yesterday, but you can see down here at the bottom, we're going to be using Proverbs 17, 14 as our base verse. So let's get into that. Let's open our Bibles. And uh, today is our part two of prayers for the people and for the nation of Ukraine. This is Proverbs seventeen fourteen. To start a conflict is to release a flood. Stop the dispute before it breaks out. Now, this is probably a warning to Russia. Uh, the, the proverb was not written to Russia. I'm not trying to say that. I'm not trying to be heretical or anything. This was not written for Russia. But this is a book of wisdom. That's what Proverbs is all about. It's a book of wisdom. And this, the wisdom that we take from Proverbs 17, 14 is this. To start a conflict is to release a flood. It's as though you're releasing a flood all over your area, all over your land. So the, the proverb writer says, stop the dispute before it breaks out. You don't want to be uh, in a flood. Now, we live in the Philippines. Our ministry is in the Philippines. And we know all about floods here. Floods can destroy homes. It can destroy a family. It can destroy livelihoods. And they come about very quickly. So, today, we're going to be praying for Ukraine. We're going to be praying for the people. We're going to be praying for some missionaries. We're also going to be praying for the military. I want to read something to you that came from First Love International Ministry. I was formerly a missionary for First Love Min Missionary or Ministry. I was a missionary for them back uh, a few years ago, 2013 to 2016. And they have a missionary. They actually have several missionaries in Ukraine. They're American missionaries that are serving in Ukraine. And here's a letter from, um, I think it was two days ago, from a missionary named Rose. We'll just call her Rose. And she is still in the Ukraine. She's actually in the Ukraine right now. Uh, she does, want, does not want to leave. She wants to remain in the Ukraine. I know sometimes people don't understand missionaries, but we're, we're not, um, we're a different kind of a, kind of a missionary is because we don't really have a homeland. And so more than likely, I, I would get, gather that Rose, I guess that Rose probably feels like that's her home and she loves the people and the country and so you can see this probably in the writing that she does. I want to read this to you. I have it on my device here. I want to read this to you. Um, for, for us, this is no surprise, Rose writes. We all knew it was coming. But even still, to officially announce you are in a full-scale war with a delusional dictator in 2022 is a horrific thing. So many people are going to die. And for what? Please don't forget us, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. 
Don't despair. Don't grieve like those who have no hope. Instead, stand firm on the promises of the Lord. Reading and praying over Psalms is really getting me through right now. It's good to remember that God always gets justice in the end. Eternity is waiting. Fellow believers, I beg of you, cry out to God to save the Ukrainian people. Open a map of Ukraine on Google or on DuckDuckGo and pray over it. Ask the Lord to put his hand of protection on Mariupol, on Kharkiv, on Sumy, on Dnipro, on Kyrgyzstan, and on and on and on. If you hear a news report, please pray for the city mentioned. There is no greater weapon you have to help us than your prayers. For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. Rose goes on to say, Cry out to God for a spiritual awakening among the Russian and Belarusian people. Pray that God would do a miracle in the Slavic nations who call themselves our brothers and that they would cast off their chains. Pray that evil will be defeated. May God bless and keep Ukraine. Now that's from Rose, an actual First Love International Ministry missionary. And she's asking us to pray. So let's pray. Lord God, mighty Father, we praise your holy name. We ask you, Lord, right now to hear Sister Rose, a missionary in Ukraine right now. We pray, Lord, that you hear all of her specific prayers and your will would line up with her prayers. Lord, we also pray right now for Rose to remain strong in your word, Lord. She says that the Psalms are helping her make it through, Lord. The power of your word is helping her and her friends and her family make it through, Lord. We pray for strength for Rose as she continues her mission in the midst of being surrounded by Russian troops. Lord, we want to pray for all the cities. We want to pray for Kiev. Kiev is the capital. We pray for the people of Kiev that want to leave to get out. We pray for the people that want to stay in Kiev to be safe. And we pray for the people uh, all throughout the country of Ukraine to be protected. But Rose mentioned it at the end. We pray for the Russian, we pray for the Belarusian people, and we pray for the Ukrainian people to come to your Son, Jesus Christ, Lord. And we pray that all evil will be knocked down, Lord. We know we have the power in you to destroy evil through our prayers. And Lord, as we pray this, we pray all of this in your Son, Jesus Christ, the precious Savior's name. Amen. Now, that's from an actual missionary. And there are more stories. First Love International, like I mentioned, I was part of their organization in the past. They have other missionaries in uh, Ukraine and Belarus. So in the coming days, if we can find some of the information, we'll try to pass that on to you so you can continue to pray for people like Rose who are doing God's work there. Now, let's go to the next uh, verse we have here, and this is actually a psalm. Let's jump over there. This is Psalm 46, 9. And it says here in the Holman Christian Study Bible, He makes wars cease throughout the earth. He shatters bows and cuts spears to pieces. He burns up the chariots. Who is he? The he is God. God makes wars cease throughout the earth. If you want this war in 
in Ukraine to end. You want the Russians to retreat and go home and the Ukrainians to go back to their life. Pray to God. If you want this virus in your country to go away, pray to God. It is the only chance you have. You do not have any other chances because we as Christians are not called to fight. We're called to pray and ask God to do the fighting on behalf of us. So we want to remember Psalm 46, 9, that it's God who can make war cease, that he's the one who shatters the bows like a bow and arrow, and he cuts spears to pieces, and he burns up chariots. Now, we don't have chariots anymore. We have tanks. We don't have spears anymore. We have missiles. We don't use bows anymore. We use automatic rifles. But God has the power to shatter. He has the power to cut. And he has the power to burn up those tanks. Let's ask God to do that. And we have a a prayer that we're going to use, that we used yesterday. We're going to ask God to empower the Ukrainian armed forces. But first... Let's go back to Psalm 46, 9, and let's pray this for the Ukrainian people. Dear Lord, Mighty Father, most powerful God, we know that you have the power to end the war in Ukraine, Lord. You have the power to cause the Russian army to retreat, Lord, and we ask you, according to your will, to do that now. Lord, cause those armies to go back, to get away from the cities, the populated areas. And we pray, Lord, that your power would come upon those rifles right now. Destroy those rifles. Cut up, the, cut up and destroy the missiles and burn up the tanks right now, Lord, through your power. We will all watch in amazement as you do this, Lord. We pray with our whole heart, Lord, right now that you would be with this war, that you would oppose this war and destroy all evil in Ukraine. Thank you, Lord. We love you, Lord. And we pray all of this in Jesus Christ, the precious Savior's name. Amen. Now we want to pray for one more thing. And we know as Christians, we are not uh, supposed to battle as the world battles. But as the world does battle, uh, many times we take we take sides, right? And I don't know if it's always part of God's will for us to take sides. Kind of like, um, you know, you you have your favorite sports team and you want your favorite sports team to win, so you pick that sports team and you pray for that sports team to win. I don't know if God really uh, is involved in that or wants to be involved in that because the other side is also praying. But for now, we are going to, on the Daily Dose of Hope, we're going to pray for the Ukrainian armed forces as they are going up against a giant in Russia. We're going to pray for three things. We're going to pray for wisdom for them, for the army, for the leaders of that army to defend their land. Second, we're going to pray for favor, God's favor in their push to push the Russians out. Number three, we're going to ask God for we're going to ask God to remind and to put it on the hearts he calls the Ukrainian armed forces to remember him and we want to pray for those armed forces to call out to the Lord Jesus Christ even in the midst of their danger let's bow our heads Lord God mighty father we know it's not always right to pick sides But today we are praying for the Ukrainian soldiers to have wisdom, for their leaders to have wisdom on how to best defend their country, Lord. We pray right now, Lord, your mighty and powerful favor upon the Ukrainian soldiers as they defend their nation, Lord. We pray, Lord, for these soldiers to be brave and courageous. And Lord, we also want to pray right now for the Ukrainian soldiers to remember you, Lord, to remember who you are and how powerful you are. And we want to pray right now, Lord, 
for those Ukrainian soldiers and their leaders to come to your son, Jesus Christ, to become believers in your son, Jesus Christ, as they see what you are doing for them on the battlefield. Lord, we pray for a small number of loss of life in this war. And we pray, Lord, that evil would be routed out. And if, if uh, Vladimir Putin is an evil leader, I pray, Lord, that you would hold him accountable. I pray, Lord, right now, all of this in your Son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Now, we have prayed for three groups so far. We've prayed for this war to end. We've prayed for a missionary. And we've also prayed for the armed forces. And we know that God has the power. Out of all of these countries, they think they have the power. They spend trillions of U.S. dollars every year trying to defend themselves and build up their military. But only God has the true power to defend and to destroy evil. And so we invite you to continue in your quiet time to pray that God would be the one who gets the glory when this war ends. And we pray that God would help the destruction to be minimal and for the loss of life to be minimal. Also pray for the courage of all those soldiers, whether they're Russian or Ukrainians, to do the right thing, not do the wrong thing, not do the evil thing. Now this is a complicated thing, right? War is a complicated issue. And there are a lot of moving parts that you and I don't know about. And there are a lot of things that, because we're not from that culture, we don't know. But we can ask God for His will. And that's what we ought to do. So, as we say our goodbyes, I will be back here tomorrow at Hope Hill's Sunday morning gathering. I think I said that yesterday thinking that today was Sunday. I was one day ahead. So I'll be back here in the morning at Hope Hill Sunday Morning Gathering. We'll have a brand new message for you tomorrow. We invite you to come back and be a part of that. We invite you to be a part of our Hope Hill Sunday Morning Gathering. Bring a friend. We'll be live at 10 a.m. if you want to join us live here in Manila, which I think is about uh, 6 p.m. over there in California. And I think over on the East Coast, it's 9 p.m. So... Join us if you can. All right, everybody. God bless you. We will see you tomorrow. We're going to play with you, play a little bit of Sky Liche Wash Away, as we say our. Wash away, wash away from my-